Here. I thank the member and I call the member for Canberra. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I rise to speak about the war in, in Ukraine and I just want to acknowledge the heartfelt speeches from the member for Griffith, uh, the member for Wills and the member for Sydney that I've, I've just heard. It's been 34 days since Russia invaded Ukraine and we've been witnessing a devastating loss of life and attacks on civilians, including attacks on hospitals and healthcare facilities. Um, the World Health Organization has confirmed that there have been more than 70 separate attacks on hospitals, ambulances and doctors in Ukraine, with the number increasing on a daily basis. And we've, Australians have been shocked and saddened to see this and particularly seeing a maternity hospital um, attacked was a, a particularly sickening example. We're seeing families torn apart as men stay to fight for their country and women try to get the rest of the family to safety. Seeing little children weeping as they say goodbye to their fathers for reasons that they have no comprehension of and the adults knowing that they may never see them again. The UN estimates that close to 1,000 civilians have been killed, although this most likely underestimates the real figure and it will continue to climb until peace can be restored. We have seen the senseless destruction of cities and infrastructure we have seen more than three and a half million Ukrainians fleeing their homes for safety in neighbouring nations. And the United Nations has predicted, predicted that the number of refugees from the conflict could reach four million. With this invasion, Vladimir Putin has attacked the rules-based order that has guaranteed peace and prosperity since the end of World War II is torn up those rules and this invasion is illegal. This is an illegal and unjust war. Ukraine is fighting for sovereignty, for democracy and for freedom. And Ukrainians have the right to live in peace. The courageous resistance of the Ukrainian people has been inspirational. And the leadership of the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Liz Zelensky, who will address our parliament tomorrow, has also been inspirational, and I very much look forward to that address. Our hearts go out to the people of Ukraine and those in Australia who have lost or are worried about their loved ones, who are caught up in that violence. And I also want to acknowledge the Russians who are so bravely protesting against this dictatorship and this war. And I think for us here in Australia, it is hard for us to fathom what that really means uh, because we live in a democracy where we do have the right to uh, protest and to speak against our government. And that is something we must deeply value and, and continue to stand up for with pride. Um, I recently had the privilege to speak at a vigil here in Canberra um, organised by Amnesty International in the Nara Peace Park, uh, not far from this building. And I wanted to again reiterate as, as the member for Canberra that I want to say on behalf of our community uh, and on behalf of our parliament to the Canberra Ukrainian community that we just stand with you in solidarity, that our hearts are with you in just this unthinkable pain that you are in. We had some incredible speakers at the vigil uh, talking about um, you know, their homeland, um, their experiences and their families and loved ones who are still there. And one of those uh, speakers was Alexander Demianenko, who works at um, the Australian National University. And he and his um, wife and young daughter had actually just returned from being in Ukraine um, before this happened. And he spoke 
very passionately about those he knows who have been tragically killed. Uh, a school friend was one. Um, and about the heartbreak felt by Ukrainians watching the destruction of their homeland and his condemnation of Mr Putin's aggression. And Canberrans uh, really stand uh, with Ukrainians in our condemnation of that, as does this parliament. I've been really pleased to see that Australia has granted more than 5,000 um, visas to Ukrainians in Ukraine and hundreds more to Ukrainians elsewhere, and that more than 1,000 of these visa holders have already arrived safely in Australia and will continue to arrive every day. And it is vitally important that Australia plays this role in accepting um, refugees from Ukraine and from all conflicts around the world. Um, Afghanistan is another example where we have seen so many people, uh, livelihoods, futures destroyed, and we know that they're, many of them are seeking a future here in Australia and we should grant that, and we should grant that to more people than we are at the moment. Um, just today I heard from a constituent who has um, managed to get five members of her family um, here to Canberra and we'll be seeking visas for them and I hope that I'll be able to help her with that. Um, and they are of course five female members of her family while the men are remaining there to, to fight for their country and its, its sovereignty. And that, that is absolutely heartbreaking. Attacks on global peace and security impact us all. And it is not in anyone's interest for any country to think that they can threaten sovereignty or change this status quo by force. It's important that we demonstrate that these actions come with a cost, and that's why Australia and the world has a responsibility to join in the defence of Ukraine and the principles of democracy and freedom. And Australia has joined in exerting diplomatic pressure and imposing sanctions on Russia and supplying aid to Ukraine. Labor has, of course, given uh, bipartisan support to these efforts and Australia should be working in concert with our international partners to continue to ratten up, ratchet up these costs for Mr Putin and his regime. Labor is also supportive of additional assistance for Ukraine, including coal and humanitarian and military assistance. Strong and comprehensive measures are required to support Ukraine's pushback against Russia's invasion. And again, I just want to say to our Ukrainian community here in Canberra and around Australia that uh, Australians uh, stand with you and our hearts are with you. Thank you, Deputy Speaker.